So I wanted to know how has the pandemic specifically affected the research that you do? So uh, uh, when the pandemic started, I, was, I have a step of uh, culture uh, uh, experiment and I was forced to, st to stop the, uh, this, uh, this step because uh, of uh, uh, um, because of the uh, the all the changement in strategy in the lab and mm -hmm. in all the laboratory of the hospital and uh, on the other hand my uh, regions uh, we can uh, were not uh, no longer available uh, and there, is, there there are many many other issues uh, relating to the research, so uh, everything stopped, and uh, the progress uh, where wh uh, for many months we don't have uh, uh, we didn't have a progress enough, and uh, uh, I think uh, this also have allowed us to have time to perhaps to read some. Uh, to, to update our uh, bibliography, to uh, read uh, about the uh, progress in uh, COVID research and so on. And also, uh, it, uh, it allows us to uh, perhaps to uh, write the progress of our research to, to Yes, to, to fix ideas and so on. Okay, that's great. And Carla, how were you affected? How was your research affected by COVID? The yeah, pandemic? it was badly affected because I had to collect some uh, Sierra from patients in order to do my, uh, my work, but I didn't collect enough uh, patients. I didn't see enough uh, clinical cases uh, in the lab. So yes, uh, it was... Uh, badly affected my work was badly affected and we also left the lab for like uh, a month yes it was a month uh, so yeah i think everyone was affected badly okay. during this pandemic every work was uh, delayed yeah okay but after a month you were able to go back into the lab and um, do lab work yes we we never stopped doing lab work but and the problem was the patient. The, there were no, not enough patients coming to our, to our lab, to our institute, because there were fear around and nobody went off uh, the house. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's, that's quite bad. And for Ikram as, as well, were you also on the month yeah. break? Yes. Well, I need to mention that I come from a city called Blida. And my city is the first one that has been affected in Algeria with the, the coronavirus. And it was the most affected. So I was banned like two months. Khawla only did one month, but I did two months because people at the lab were afraid of me. So they were like, just stay home, don't come. Yes. So they had to go to my city and I work in another city. So I did two months and it also affected my research. As I said, I'm working on polymorphism. So I do uh, the real time PCR. And when the coronavirus really spread in the country, we, we had to give up the machine, the TACMAN machine for the diagnosis of uh, COVID, of the virus. So I really had to stop my, uh, my essays. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I, I, started early, I started very early before the, the COVID uh, crisis, but I really had to stop. I wish I could uh, do more patients and more samples, but I had to stop uh, at, uh, I didn't have many uh, samples as I would okay. like, I would, would like to have, yeah. Yeah, no, that's also a very difficult situation to be as a PhD student. Yes. Like, I'm also a PhD student, but fortunately for me, I didn't need to be in the lab. So my lab work wasn't affected, but it can be very disheartening knowing that you're, you're stopping the lab work and you have to catch up at some point. Yes. And it also means extensions of your PhD programs, which you may not have planned for. So mm -hmm. that's, yeah, but um, I hope you did get a lot of reading and writing in the middle of the, the break, even though I know it was probably hard because you're probably stressing about going back into the lab. Exactly, yes. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to know, like, um, did you manage to find the work-life balance during the pandemic while you're working from home? Well, uh, 
I think Selsen might be the one who had the most uh, struggle because <laughs> she's, she's an assistant professor. But for us, we are still students. So all we have to do is to study and you can easily do that at home. It's not like you have the responsibilities that Selsen would have, I guess. Okay. So Selsen, like you oh. mentioned, you have three children. So how did you yeah. manage that while also going to the hospitals? Okay. Um... I was working when, when everybody, everybody uh, my children, my husband were at home. Uh, it's a really a stressful situation because uh, you 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 say you say that you are not uh, perhaps you you may be a more good mother than than to be a uh, 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 dog not here when all uh, all of your children are at home and uh, but I, I tried really i tried to to be there when i uh, take uh, uh, take off uh, and uh, i tried to uh, to 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 do some uh, activities to share some activities with the with my children, with my husband, uh, when I I am at home, it it can it it it's good experience. It uh, it is really uh, original and uh, very good experience uh, because you you have you you see the multi-faced uh, uh, the multi-faced. Uh, of uh, uh, of the the pandemic so you 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 have an eye on the uh, medical uh, what uh, what uh, it is happening at the medical level but also at the, the social and family level it's really uh, an original experience but very stressful at the same time yeah i can imagine <laughs> I can imagine. Fortunately for me, um, or unfortunately, I don't know whichever way you want to think about it. I don't have children, and I could have just imagined, like, I saw those Skype videos when kids were coming in, and initially people were like, oh, why are the kids there? But, like, eventually people were like, oh, the kids, you know, there's nothing we can do about them. They are part of the environment we're in. And people became more understanding over time, so that was really great to see. Because initially they were not really understanding of you having kids in the background and hopefully even after the pandemic people would understand that maybe sometimes they just would prefer to work from home and like reduce on that commuting time and probably spend more time with my family when in the middle of the work schedule so we'll see how that goes in future how much of it we can maintain um post covid so on a lighter note um did you guys have gain any new hobbies or restart your hobbies during the pandemic oh yes during summer we start uh, fishing wow uh, yes <laughs> it's, uh, really it's, good. it's my yes and uh, uh, also with uh, my i have two daughter and one boy with my two daughters i started to uh, to see and to practice with videos, uh, to learn dancing, different style of dancing, belly dance, uh, ballet, and so on. It was really amazing. <laughs> Crazy, but amazing at the same time. That's great. So. Did you end up downloading TikTok? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really so. nice. That's a very nice family, mother-daughter experience. That's really yeah. great. My um, husband start uh, the uh, cooking it was a disaster on the kitchen but it it, it is it's good <laughs> it, it it learned a lot so uh, I think uh, it was uh, it was a, a nice experience uh, uh, be because uh, yes because our routine we used to in our routine we used to to uh, my my husband used to travel a lot and I am with the husband, with the, the children at home. And I, I work uh, almost uh, uh, all the day and they are on the school. And uh, we didn't uh, have enough time. Really, we didn't have 
uh, enough time to see each other to practice such uh, crazy thing. So it was really yeah. the yes the positive side in this uh, pandemic. Yeah, no, that's really great. Seeing those um, parent-children dances were really nice and entertaining. So that's nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kaula, any new hobbies you started? Um, well, as uh, Sosan said, I started fishing, but it was for a very short time, <laughs> like <laughs> twice or three times only. <laughs> then I stopped because this year is my uh, year of graduation. So I had to work uh, on that. So no hobbies for 2020. Waiting for 2021 to start yes. on new hobbies. <laughs> yes, I'm with you on that. I'm also waiting for 2021 after I finish my yeah. thesis <laughs> and start all the new hobbies. Hopefully, also yeah. freedom to travel around different places. Um, yeah, Ikram, sure. any new well, hobbies that you started? For me, I went back to a very old hobby of mine, which is knitting. I love to knit. I used to knit a lot of scarves. And I stopped for some reason. I don't know why. So I used my spare time <laughs> to knit some scarf again. And it was great. This is the only hobby I can, I can remember now. Yeah, I, I also went back to reading books because I stopped at some point. <laughs> yeah. So I read some books. And I was basically reading books and knitting and doing my, my studies that I have to do. Yeah. Yeah. At least you have scarves ready for winter. That's about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> so that's really great. Thank you all for, what, for agreeing to be interviewed once again. It was a really nice experience. And it was great to hear um, your experiences during the course and also how COVID-19 has affected your own personal lives and your academic research life. So that's been really nice and enlightening. And it, I think the viewers of the videos will also um, be very happy to hear these stories because not many researchers are sharing their stories of how they've been affected by COVID-19.